Dear students, a very good morning to all of you and Shubha uh, Vijaya to all my students. So, uh, we are here to revise uh, the chapter that is uh, the grindstone. Yes, this is from your A Tale of Two Cities, your rapid pot. And uh, this is the first video after the Puja vacation. And the first chapter that we are going to revise here and discuss here it is the grindstone. Phenomenal chapter it is. A very frightening chapter. After the last chapter, the Battle for Bastille, we read onward to Paris. But again, that chapter ended in a little bit of uh, uncertainty. That chapter ended in uh, despair. And here, this chapter is again one more thing that will frighten us, all the readers. This chapter is going to frighten us as if what to happen with uh, Charles Darnay, our hero. Uh, we don't know. We have already known that uh, he was uh, imprisoned and we already came across the fact that uh, Charles Darnay was in the La Force prison which is inside the battle, uh, which is inside the Fort Bastille and we also know that uh, inside, the, inside that prison there is a, a special uh, inmate that is our, uh, that is the King of France and uh, if the king of france is in the prison is imprisoned and there is nothing that can save him so we have little hope left for charles darnay to get him out of the prison so right now in such pretext in such a dismal background this uh, chapter begins and this chapter is a grindstone uh, this is a particular type of stone where we sharpen our weapons now it is used as a metaphor what is going to be sharpened here that is uh, uh, what we have to take care of is it going to be the weapons of those people which are going to be sharpened that will slaughter more and more aristocratic uh, aristocrat peoples and their family members who were innocent yes there might be some culprits uh, from the aristocrat society from the aristocratic setup of the government but their families what did they do did they harm any any of the sufferers know they have only one uh, I should say one backdrop or I should say one uh, weak point Achilles Hill and that is that they have been the relatives they have been the successors of a person who had been a tyrant uh, during the time when he was or she was alive that is the price which they are paying uh, through their lives so now here we have to check what is to be sharpened here in the grindstone? Uh, is it going to be the is it going to be the the weapons, or is it going to be our wit, which is going to be sharpened? And we will find out a find out a way. We will slice out a way from the dense uh, cloud, dense uh, uh, dense forest of uncertainty. Whether there will be a ray of hope that will be discernible for us, that we have to check here in this. Uh, uh, chapter okay oh my god this is a very nice picture of a monkey very nice see nice okay so let's begin that is a uh, chapter chapter 10 the grindstone so the Telson bank was in the Saint German quarter of Paris. It was well guarded. Uh, we know that all banks they are well guarded because uh, wealth of different people they they keep it in bank in the hope that it will be secured uh, by the uh, arrangement that bank has done, which they cannot do at home. That's why all banks are generally well guarded, well built, and so many other security features they are included. In the system of a bank so Telson Bank we know that there was a branch in France and uh, it was uh, not performing well and Mr. Lorry was sent there to take care of the business because there riot was going on revolution was going on taking place that's why there was a toxic and toxic condition in the uh, usual life and that's why uh, Mr. Lorry he went there to take care of the bank business to make it uh, roll smoothly and he was staying there where was the bank situated? It is the German quarter in Paris. So it was well guarded. Mr. Lorry occupied rooms in the bank and did his duty. 
we know Mr. Lord is a person who does his job very neatly and who is a person to be believed, to be dependent on. All the jobs, all the, all the things which he did, it ended well and he made it successful. He, he saved Darni previously in a successful uh, arrangement. Okay, so this uh, dutiful banker is taking care of the bank which is situated at German Quarter which is in <coughs> sorry which is in Paris in France at some point during that day the gate bell sounded and when it opened Lucy her father little Lucy and Miss Pross rushed in so here we have to check that before Darnley left the um, left the house he left a uh, letter he left a note for his uh, family members and there he described why he had to leave his house all of a sudden and there they came to know his family members uh, Lucy his wife his daughter his uh, father-in-law and Lucy's governess they came to know the fact that it was Danny who had to leave all of a sudden in order to save one of his friends that is a postmaster uh, Mr. Gavelli and he went to France but later also uh, they came to know that uh, the decree was passed in France that all the emigrants their uh, properties uh, were uh, confiscated and it was it was declared uh, as a threat uh, to all those emigrants that if they dare to come back to the country to France they will be imprisoned and uh, consequently they will be executed under the guillotine so they knew the danger uh, Mr. Darnay went into so they rushed to france they met uh, mr lorry because mr lorry was their only hope there was no one else who could help them so they have reached mr lorry secretly clandestinely and uh, asking for help in order to take out Darnley from the hellish prison we call it la force uh, amazed yes of course mr lorry would surely be amazed because he had not a faintest idea uh, whether these people can visit him right in that condition right in that situation where it is completely unfavorable for them so amazed mr lorry asked what brought them here and uh, failed to hear that darney was in law force prison because, because it was mr lorry who knew it very well that no one can save mr darney no one can save mr darney because he was in that position he was in the ground zero position of the revolution and he knew the fact that nothing in this world can save any Bastille prisoner, can take them out of the clutches of these patriot citizens. It was completely impossible. That's why he was paid to know that, oh my God, Derby is there. How am I supposed to take him out? I have no means to do so. They got uh, in safely and sometime later a throng of about 50 men and women came to shop in their weapons at the grinding wheel in the courtyard. So right after some time when they were discussing about how to take out Darnay, a people, a gang of goons, they entered the courtyard of the bank where a rolling stone kind of thing, which we call grinding stone, is placed and they came there to sharpen their weapons. They did not come there to attack, they did not come there to have a chat, they came there to sharpen their weapons. These are the weapons with which they are slaughtering one by one aristocrats and their family members. So they, so you can imagine uh, that a group of men armed with uh, sharp weapons they are gathering at a place which is very near to you and they are sharpening their weapons there you can hear the screeching sound you can hear the sparks uh, uh, coming out of those uh, uh, grinding wheel uh, this is something frightening the moment you imagine it you keep yourself aloof from that kind of hostile uh, gatherings so see what happens the, the something that will happen here it is beyond our imagination being an old Bastille prisoner, the old doctor decided to take the opportunity to rush out to meet this group. Yes. So when all other people there waiting when this mob will go out, will thin out, right at that time it was Mr. Don, uh, Dr. Manethi who decided to visit that such a, uh, such a hostile mob. And there was a particular reason behind it. What was it that Mr. Manethi had been a Bastille prisoner? He had spent time with some of these goons there inside the uh, uh, inside the prison law force 
and so he considered it to be a great time to be the apt time to ask help from his once uh, inmates so he went there asking for help from those uh, people who had been in that prison la force He asked them to free Evermonde at La Force and left with uh, the enthusiastic group. Soon shouts of save the Bastille prisoners king, save Evermonde in La Force were heard. So we can understand that the plan which was made by Dr. Manetti was uh, started to uh, work, started to roll out. Whichever the thing he had thought in order to save Darne, actually it clicked. And so these people, instead of attacking them, these people, when they got to know that we have one of ours inside the Bastille prisoner, they started raising the demand that uh, that particular king, that particular prisoner, who is a king of an old Bastille prisoner, must be freed, must be liberated. We don't know whether this will work or not. Later, we will come to know it. Mr. Laurie, Lucy and Miss Pross waited anxiously. Uh, till the doctor's return. Knowing that he was compromising the bank's safety by keeping the manatees here, Mr. Lorry moved them to the lodging near the bank. Yes, we know that. And here he is acting as, a, as an apt banker. Now the Patriot citizens, they came to know that one of the kings of the prisoner, Mr. Darnay, is staying at the bank. So the bank is giving shelter to the families of the prisoners. So they will go hostile against the bank, they will charge the bank, they will decimate it to the ground. Mr. Lorry knew it. So he took a very judicious decision. He took, he took them and relocated them near to the bank, somewhere else in another shelter, so that he can tell them that I am not the person who gave shelter to these families of the prisoner. And he thus he kept his bank out of harm's way. Okay, like a judicious banker, he took the decision. That same did differed with his wife and the lady who was called Vengeance. You know that the lady who killed uh, most of the aristocrats with her hand uh, violently, that lady was given the epithet Vengeance. And accompanied by that lady, it was Mrs. Difford, who had been the linchpin of all these uh, women group who played a catalyst in uh, spreading the venom of hatred uh, in the women and gathered them and charged them. These two key figures, they visited the bank, Mr. Lorry. Had I been Mr. Lorry, I would have been, uh, I should say, faint. I would have fainted. I would have <laughs> uh, went into the bathroom or whatever it is after watching these two uh, hostile ladies. But now Mr. Lorry faced them calmly and coolly and uh, Mr. Lorry took them to the new lodging where Lucy read the short note. Seeing Lucy's child, Madame Difference looked darkly at her. Looked darkly at her means she had some, uh, uh, I should say, uh, toxic. She had some toxic intention inside her brain, inside her mind. Her intention is not favorable, it is adverse, it is toxic. And that was visible uh, by the appearance of her face. And a mother can easily uh, detect it if someone else is hoping good or bad for the betterment or for the future of her child. And it was Miss Lucy who understood it promptly. And right then he, she took the decision to beg before Mr. Mrs. Difford that you do not do any harm to my child. See, Madame Differs looked darkly at her. Lucy took a fright and begged that Madame show mercy to her child and husband. Whereupon, Madame declared dispassionately, without much feeling, indifferently, uh, that only Lucy was her concern. So, Madame Differs showed a nonchalance towards Lucy. He didn't show any kind of uh, extra feeling or extra emotion. Just he said that you are my concern, and why did he say so? Because it was Miss Lucy, now Mrs. Lucy, who had been the daughter of the person whom they had served as their master. 
That's why they are feeling grateful and they want to show them that whatever we are doing, we are doing it out of gratitude. And that's why Miss Lucy, uh, Mrs. Difford is telling that you, Miss Lucy, is my concern. You are my concern. Your daughter and whoever is associated with you, I don't care whether they will live or die. Which means, again, though Mrs. Difford is trying to show that she wants to save Miss Lucy and uh, others and Mr. Darnay, we know that deep inside her, there is sharp hatred. And she will definitely take the chance, whenever she will get it, to kill, slaughter these people. So again, back to back two chapters, these chapters ended in rather uh, dispassionately, I should say. This ended in despair. There is no hope which is uh, indicated by the happenings of these chapters. And we, are, we have to wait until something miraculous happens in future that might save Mr. Darnley, that might save the whole Darnley family, this happy family, and keep them happy ever afterwards. That's all for today, students. We will meet again uh, with the new things and interesting things. Till then, ta-da.